The Apostle Paul asked the question in 1 Corinthians 2, What man knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? Then he goes on to say that, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And then he tells us in verse 14, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, what Paul here is saying is that you will never be able to understand the Scriptures unless you have the Holy Spirit teach you. In Isaiah 9 verse 8, it says that the Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it has lighted upon Israel. Now the name speaks of a person's character, and the name Jacob means cheat, supplanter, twister. And after wrestling with the Lord, he received a new name, which speaks of a new character, and he was called Israel meaning Prince of God. Now Jacob speaks of the natural man and Israel speaks of the spiritual man. And the word of the Lord could not come on to Jacob because the old sinful nature we receive from Adam is disobedient to the word of God. And Israel speaks of the spiritual man and only that which is born of the Spirit can be obedient to the word of God. When Jacob was blessing his sons on his deathbed, he called them sons of Jacob, meaning sons of the old natural man, but he told them to listen to Israel, your father. Listen to the spiritual man, the hidden man of the heart. And likewise, we're told that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, because when he received the word from the Lord the first time, he rebelled. He ran away. And referring to his resurrection, Jesus spoke of Jonah in the belly of the whale. And this speaks of life out of death. Then after Jonah had dealt with his fear, he was then able to be obedient to the word of God. It means that we will never be obedient to the will or to the word of God as long as we haven't dealt with the old sinful nature. Because The natural man cannot understand the word of God. That's why Jesus could not use any of the scribes and the Pharisees in his own day. They knew the scriptures from beginning to end, but they had all the understanding in their heads, but they had no heart knowledge. I mean, why didn't they recognize the Messiah? Because all the scriptures pointed to him. Well, It doesn't matter what theological college you've been to. It doesn't matter how many degrees or letters you have acquired after your name. Because your head knowledge, your intellect and your education will never give you the revelation that you need to discern what is written. For only the Holy Spirit can reveal Christ to you. And only the Holy Spirit can enlighten this word to you. Otherwise, It is just a book of words. Because whenever you try to interpret without the Spirit, it may say something totally different to what it means. The first parable Jesus gave us was the parable of the sower. And like all the other parables, Jesus had to explain them to his disciples. Like the scribes and the Pharisees, they had no understanding because the Holy Spirit had not yet been given. Jesus said that his word was truth, and in his priestly prayer in John 16, he prayed, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And Jesus also said, The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And Paul writes that the letter, that is to say, the written word, it kills, but the Spirit gives life. And only the Holy Spirit can bring the Scriptures to life. Otherwise, it remains a dead word. Because the Word of God by itself cannot give life. But it points to him 
who can give life. And that's why we need to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit to make these words come alive. In the parable of the sower, Jesus tells us that when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, then the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. And the one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, in other words, since he has no depth of character, he lasts only a short time. Because when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, it quickly falls away. And the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries and the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. Now, here you have three different types of soil that the word of God failed to produce anything in. And in the parable, God is a sower. Our hearts are the ground where the seed of his word is sown. Now, if you were a farmer, you would not sow seed on fallow ground. This is ground which has once been tilled, but now lies hard and waste. It needs to be broken up. It needs to be softened before it is ready to receive the grain. And the Bible speaks of two outpourings of the Holy Spirit. For example, in the letter of James, he mentions the former and the latter rain. And the farmer waits patiently for both the former and the latter rain. And this former rain speaks of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that birthed the church and brings us into a right relationship with God himself. But the latter rain is different. It is poured on the soil in preparation for harvest time. So first of all, the farmer has to prepare the ground and then wait for the former rain to plant his crop. And in order for the crop to take root, that fallow ground has to be broken up. And as I said, the fallow speaks of the hardness of heart that is mentioned of in the parable of the sower. Now, you can hear the word of the God. It can go all over your head, or you can reject it. Because of the hardness of heart, we cannot always receive all the promises of God when we hear it. For example, when Jesus healed the man with the withered hand, we are told that he was grieved by the hardness of the hearts of the scribes and Pharisees. This also happened to the disciples, because they couldn't even believe in Mary, when she came and told them about the resurrection. And later on the Lord rebuked them for their hardness of heart and their unbelief. So, if you're having trouble with your faith, it simply means that there is a hardness of heart there. Now, I remember in primary school being taught all the stories from both the New and the Old Testament. So, like most people growing up, we would hear the word being taught in school and read each Sunday at chapel. The only problem was that you would hear all these stories over and over and even remember them off by heart. But they were just stories. They never came alive for me. So I was no better than the scribes of the Pharisees. I had no understanding. And there I was, baptised, confirmed. Now, the scriptures give us certain keys. And these unlock or enlighten areas that were once darkness to us. That's what Peter was saying when he said that we would do well to pay attention to the word as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. In other words, keep meditating on it until you get the revelation. Now, one of the keys to breaking up the fallow ground 
is actually mentioned in Jeremiah in chapter 4 and verse 3, where it says, Men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. Do not sow among thorns. Now, Judah means praise. And the scripture says that praise is like incense. And as incense goes up, so our praise fills the temple. So when we offer up a time of praise and worship, what is happening is that the Lord is then breaking up the hardness of our hearts. And he is then able to pour down righteousness upon us, like oil on the head of Aaron, flowing down upon the body. Praise and worship causes us to keep our eyes on the Lord, away from the cares and worries of the thorns mentioned in the parable of the sower, thus breaking up the hardness of our hearts, enabling us to receive the anointing of his word, to penetrate through to the fertile soil and then letting the seed take root and then in due course producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So like the farmer you have got to make sure that when the rain does come the ground is prepared to receive the word of God. Because when we ask and we don't receive, then it hardens our hearts towards God and towards his word. If that is you, then there is an answer. If you will start praising and worshipping the Lord, then the hardness of your heart will be broken. The fallow ground will become ploughed. If you remember, Hezekiah sent out Judah at the head of the battle. And that is the instruction that Paul gave to the Ephesians when he said, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Because when you start to worship the Lord like that, the hardness of your heart will be broken. And what happens is that the latter rain is poured out on you. That is when the seed grows and the head of the wheat forms. But it's not yet ready for harvesting, because there is a time for harvesting, and that is when the fields become white. As Jesus mentioned in John chapter 4, verse 35, it's when the head of the wheat produces a white flower, just like potatoes do, that's when you know that the harvest is ready. Now, you cannot reap a harvest before it is ripe, because it isn't fully grown. And then you will lose the harvest if you leave it far too late. So likewise, the Lord wants us to grow to maturity in preparation for his coming, because he is coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And he won't come until that takes place within the body of Christ, because the bride, which speaks of the church, has to make herself ready for the bridegroom. The former rain first fell at Pentecost. This started the growth of the church, and ever since, the Holy Spirit has been working to bring us to maturity, till we all grew up with the nature of Christ himself. So in each of our lives, it all starts in embryonic form. It has to grow. It has to develop, it has to mature, and that's why Paul said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So, if you want the word of God to speak to you, then start praising and worshipping him. Because worship should be a lifestyle. Because Jesus said that true worshippers would worship the Father in spirit and in truth. He doesn't want us to come to our meetings or our gatherings so that we can start to praise and worship him. He wants us to be a people who are already praising and worshipping him as a normal part of our life, not just when we get to church. 
I do not believe that Jesus wants us to come to church so that we can just worship him. He wants us to be worshippers, coming to church so that he can dwell in the praises of his people. So the key to getting rid of the hardness of heart, so that the Holy Spirit can plant the seed of God's word in fertile soil, is to start praising and worshipping the Lord. As Paul said, we were to be filled with the Spirit, speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, so that his kingdom can come alive inside you on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.